VCAs, or voltage controlled amplifiers, sometimes referred to as variable gain amplifiers, a type of electronic circuit, typically in a discrete package, and most often as an IC, for integrated circuit. As its name suggests, and similar in principle to the other gain circuits we've looked at, FET and briefly optical compressors, it controls the gain of a signal through its input and output by means of another signal or control voltage. And maybe the idea seems a little less tangible because of the versatility and prevalence of VCAs in lots of different types of equipment, synthesizers, mixing desks, and of course compressors. But really, they're not much different from tubes or transistors in wide applicable use cases, especially for audio use. And there may even be some confusion and how this factors in with other ICs, such as operational amplifiers, in regards to a gain reduction circuit. But an op amp in itself is mostly too simplistic to provide all the facilities we would need to have a proper gain reduction circuit, like in a compressor or other dynamics processor design. And while these are also an integrated circuit, so a small package with components such as transistors, resistors, and capacitors, but similarly in principle, if we build a small package with some transistors or op amps and other stuff together in a small circuit, then we could harness the same kinds of precision that we might associate with op amps in a variable gain design as a VCA. And not all VCAs are the same. So it should be important to note that the following information will be concerning VCAs that are used primarily in the dynamics control systems that I often talk about. And specifically, we will look briefly at what might be considered the original, the Blackmer gain cell, invented by David Blackmer in the early 1970s. It's a VCA with an exponential law or operation, making it ideal for modulating or attenuating audio signals. What made Blackmer's design so revolutionary was its log anti-log processing was able to be kept in a bipolar fashion making it the first VCA to be acceptable for use in professional audio applications. The audio signal's natural bipolarity is kept through a push-pull system of current mirrors, a device that reflects or copies and inverts signals while maintaining a consistent current regardless of the load. Now we might wonder why this emphasis on current is important since audio signals are represented as voltages typically. But in Blackmer's design, the input and output are represented as current and transformed from and back to voltage outside of the cell. And what gives VCAs this superior performance is due to the much tighter tolerances for manufacturing. Although the early designs did rely heavily on hand matching and heat treating to get the best matches possible, and the tolerances of the transistors in the Blackmer design are absolutely critical for the log anti-log behavior. And this log anti-log is required for logarithmic control or attenuation of the audio signal. And Blackmer cell remains a primary design for VCAs in studio equipment, even presently. And I hope this provides a good small introduction to understanding what VCAs are and how they differ from other topologies. And I'm sure I will talk more about VCAs in the future. With the new vocal fix-it suite of tools, I wanted to approach some more common utilitarian tasks regarding voice recording in perhaps a more novel software approach. Instead of harnessing all that spectral data and FFT slicing to transparently remove these undesired attributes, and be left with spectral distortion and smearing, I wanted to look at how I might design a speculative piece of hardware to address these tasks, using something like a Blackmer gain cell at its core. So not like transparent with digital artifacts, but maybe a little more of a color or sound that breaks up possibly more pleasantly when pushed harder. And the plus versions give you extra controls to really shape and accentuate this character. The Vocal Fix-It Suite is available now.